yeah a very good morning to all of you and welcome to a brand new episode of reverse engineering today's topic we'll be dealing with the elementaries of electrical engineering so as far as the as the elementaries of electrical engineering are concerned let's understand there is like a, a lot of problem and confusion with electrical engineering students regarding the voltage polarities current directions and how to take and how to visualize unlike civil engineering they say that those people can look into it they can see the matter they can see the cement they can see the gravel but here and we don't see but 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 we can feel it and this channel is dedicated to the people who want to feel the electrical engineering if you get the feel of it you can solve any problem you cannot solve problem just by solving problems but you have to understand the technique you have to understand the technical know-how what goes behind the scenes so let's start now uh, if you primarily see an electrical engineering i'll say that it's just like a river flow okay current voltage and your resistance can be seen in the areas the practical views in the things around you okay surrounding you so just like a river flow we can say that the water inside the river is just like charge so water inside the river is just like the charge and the flow of this water is nothing but as flow of water so flow of water happens with rate of change of time so water flow depends upon the rainy season how packed the river is and how uh, deep the river is and how shallow the river is so this flow of water will govern and decide the current okay and now unlike from what slope the river is fall falling this would be the pressure okay the pressure with which it is falling is nothing but the voltage so these are understanding power point of view let's analyze the first part of electrical engineering even from the 10th standard you have been taught this ohm's law time and again you have heard about this law and you say that v by i is equal to r okay so from where it comes so this thing is very important if in an intro you have been asked define ohm's law so how do you define i'll say that at constant pressure okay and temperature at constant pressure and temperature okay and temperature electric field density okay electric field electric field gradient is that is your voltage per unit length is equal or i can say is proportional proportional to the current density now see why i am saying this it depends electrical field gradient of different materials is different okay for a semiconductor it would be different for an element it would be different so you have a term called as resistivity okay and this resistivity is 1 by mu okay that term is very important okay so the basic thing over here let's analyze is that that means current density current density means j and j would mean what j would mean j would mean current by area so this is current by area and we say that this current by area is equal to this ratio okay some books may write uh, uh, this as sigma okay so we'll and sigma is equal to one by rho so we'll also follow the same thing okay let it be let this be okay so j is equal to sigma v by l so this is our equation okay this is equation one this is equation two so if i write uh, equation one we substitute back i by a i by a would be equal to what we can write sigma v by l now if this is equation three let's move on so v by i v by i would be equal to r we bring v over here okay and uh, or in other terms if we keep this v over there only and we try to get a over here only so we can write v by i okay so sorry so v by i here let's cross multiply this hmm? uh, 
uh, we can say v is equal to i by a into l divided by sigma uh, so we got this equation here we can say v by i is equal to l by a okay l by a no, 1 by sigma so v by i is nothing but what is it v by i it is nothing but as r we have r over here v by i and 1 by sigma is nothing but as this and rho l by a so our resistance is equal to our resistivity into the length divided by the area of the cross section so this exactly is the ohm's law definition for electrical engineering purposes so from these equation 1 2 3 and let me write this as 4 and we get this equation 5 so this was about uh, the electrical engineering ohm's law definition how do we define it now comes to a major and an important concept of how do we decide an element okay so there's a lot of confusion while taking the directions and the polarity so what is very important in electrical engineering is that in electrical engineering circuit solving or any practical problem is that we need to understand what is an energy storing element and what is an energy absorbing element okay so if you have a battery this is for the dc circuit analysis this is the negative side this is the positive side hmm? so if i say that my uh current current this is my voltage polarity and my current is following from the negative to positive so negative side would mean less potential okay less potential and the positive side would mean positive side over there you can see means more potential more potential so one important thing is that if you see a battery in your house plus minus 3 volt battery that does not mean this is 0 this is 3 there is nothing called as zero potential so sup suppose negative is equal to zero this is wrong this is wrong so it might be a two volt and this might be five volts so the potential difference across this can be three volts it can be anything it can be three volt and it can be six volt so that means that so now less potential now you can see this is an element uh, wherein the current is moving from the lower end to the higher end i can say low 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 lower end or low potential okay low potential let's write it as lp okay and this is high potential high potential let's give it as hp so when this is the signature so you can say that this is an energy okay releasing element energy releasing element so energy releasing element and an active element and an active element okay just like your inverter battery at home just like inverter battery or any battery of that sort which gives you the energy or the torch battery that is releasing the energy but if you see the same thing okay again i am drawing this is my voltage this is my plus minus and now what i see that my direction is unlike this my direction is this so now i see it is from high potential to low potential so this would mean this item is an energy absorbing element this is an energy absorbing element absorbing element and i can see this is an passive element i can say this is an passive element now remember the three elements that we saw resistance inductance and capacitance these elements are passive elements and energy absorbing elements out of these three elements these two elements inductor and capacitor have memory okay have memory they can store energy okay they can store energy when they are charged by a battery or something like that but they are not active elements as such if they are not charged they cannot release energy whereas this resistor is a memory less device okay memory less device it does not store energy it does not store energy so th these things we have to keep in mind it does not store energy now there are certain things that you have already noticed in the previous uh, uh, standards when you were younger so the thing is that now if i connect a voltage source okay 
this is my voltage source with resistors okay so now one more important point here with students what i have found is that students are a little bit like they don't know how to take this polarity over here resistance is given resistance is given which side is plus whether this plus this minus this minus this plus so they are like a bit hesitant in that so when we are taking the directions they are like sir which side is plus which side is minus so don't worry about that see the thing is that definitely this is a battery okay this is a battery okay okay and this is an active element okay active element now it depends now it depends like if nothing is given if you take the current direction like this okay this is i so you see that minus to plus so if you see like this the current is flowing from minus to plus so minus to plus is a rise in potential a rise in potential so in case of a battery if there is a rise in potential then you take that as positive okay now same battery is connected plus minus but the current direction is unlike uh, this the current direction is downwards so you see that this is high potential point this is low potential point current direction is downwards that means the current is moving in fall of potential so fall of potential now in any aspect you will not get confused with the directions you take rise in potential as positive and fall in potential as negative that's it now what what about this okay resistor so the resistor is connected okay it it is now uh, the thing is that it is immaterial whether there is a rise or fall we definitely know across the resistor there would be always fall of potential okay why there would be a fall of potential you i have already told you see this is minus plus okay if the current is going in this direction that means a releasing element and for energy absorbing element there would be fall of potential okay fall of potential so this is a passive sign convention over here so if i have to write an equation for this r1 r2 so how do i write my v would be equal to because this is a series network in series there is no chance i have a pipe over here i have a pipe over here and i have a circuit over here if a river uh, i am flowing the water same water is getting flowed okay if i break uh, some junction at the river so here if i dig something so some water will flow here some water will flow here so that means this water gets divided but in a series network there is only a single node connected over there so there would be water flow only in one direction so if i have to write my rise in potential is my v is equal to here my fall in potential voltage across this would be vr1 okay and voltage across this point would be vr2 so this is very uh, important uh, principle you have to understand uh, the meaning of fall of potential and uh, rise of potential so i can write my v rise is equal to v fall so this was about it uh, regarding the first preliminary points and the next lecture we will be understanding how to calculate the voltage divider network and the current divider circuit please follow these lectures from top to end and you'll be in very much benefit thank you very much and those who of you who are new to the channel please like share and subscribe our channel and thanks a lot for watching and supporting us thank you thanks